So this was the essay of pathology in 2016 supplementary exam. So let us quickly review shock. We will be discussing it under the topics what is it, definition, basic mechanism, its classification, about hypovolemic and cardiogenic shock, the clinical features, stages and finally its morphology. So first of all what is shock? Shock is actually a pathway or some kind of an outcome of many type of conditions or diseases. That is many condition causes shock and if it progress it can result in death. So some of these conditions include trauma, burns, myocardial infraction, embolism, sepsis etc. Now the definition varies according to the book we refer. Now according to Davidson, shock is a clinical syndrome that develops when there is critical impairment of tissue perfusion due to some form of acute circulatory failure. When there is some form of acute circulatory failure that result in the impairment of tissue perfusion and it result in a lot of clinical features or clinical syndrome and that is called as shock. Now another definition that concentrate on the tissue perfusion is that shock is a pathological process due to tissue perfusion impairment and that result in cellular dysfunction and organ failure. Now we should know why there is impaired tissue perfusion it is mainly due to either decrease in the amount of blood or increase in the overall capacity of the circulatory system. Now moving on to the basic mechanism. Ultimately all type of shock pass through the same pathway. First of all there will be a failure of the circulatory system and that result in systemic hypotension. And when the BP falls, as we said before, there will be impairment of tissue perfusion. Now, we know that the tissue require adequate blood supply for proper functioning. So, what happens when there is no adequate supply? It results in reversible cellular injury. Now, if the blood supply is not corrected timely, it will ultimately result in irreversible tissue and organ damage and that result in death. So, so far we have talked about what is shock, its definition and basic mechanism. Now let us move on to the classification. Classification is based on the etiology or the underlying cause. Mainly there are three type of shock. They are hypovolemic shock, cardiogenic shock and septic shock. There are also other type of shock like neurogenic shock. Here the blood vessels loses its tone. So as we said before there will be increase in the total capacity. An example for this is anesthetic accident. Another type of shock is anaphylactic shock. It is due to IgE mediated allergy. Here vasodilation causes apparent increase in capacity. Now academically the septic shock is the most important shock and we must 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 learn it. I will be discussing it in the next video. For now let us look at the hypovolemic and cardiogenic shock. Now hypovolemic shock as the name suggests is due to the decrease in the volume of blood. It can be due to loss of blood or loss of plasma or loss of fluid. Now blood can be lost in hemorrhage, the plasma, in burns, the fluid while using the diuretics or in case of diarrhea and all these causes hypovolemia and hypovolemia can cause a decrease in the cardiac output and as the cardiac output decreases it results in hypotension and as we told before the low blood pressure results in impaired perfusion. Now it is coming in line with the basic mechanism that we told before.
Now, since hypovolemia can be corrected by fluid and other methods, its prognosis is very good. Next is cardiogenic shock that is related to the heart. It can be due to a lot of factors which are divided as intrinsic factors, for example, myocardial infraction, extrinsic factors like cardiac tamponade or can be obstruction as in case of pulmonary embolism. Now all these causes a decrease in cardiac output and that result in hypotension and it goes back all through the basic mechanism that we said before. Another characteristic feature of cardiogenic shock is pulmonary embolism. So what happens here? In heart, the oxygenated blood is coming from the lungs and going through the left atrium and then to the left ventricle and to the systemic circulation. Now the heart is unable to pump all the blood that is reaching it from the lungs. As a result, a high pressure is being built up inside the lungs. The increased hydrostatic pressure result in fluid from moving from the blood into the interstitium of the lungs. This result in pulmonary edema. The prognosis of cardiogenic shock is usually poor. Now coming on to the clinical features, they are mostly due to the result in hypotension and hypoperfusion. They include altered sensorium, cyanosis, oliguria, tachypnea, cold and clammy skin and weak pulse. Now the patient who survive may have the possibility of renal dysfunction. Okay, half of the page is complete. Now let us move on to the stages of shock. Depending on the progression, it can be non-progressive, progressive, and irreversible at a non-progressive stage the body can regain all the disrupted homeostasis by itself this is through various neurohumoral mechanisms that we study like baroreceptor renin angiotensin mechanism etc so what is happening in this stage the body try to maintain the blood flow in the vital parts so what happened to the non-vital parts? For example, the skin, the blood flow decreases and as a result, it becomes cold and clammy. So that is why in shock, the skin feels cold and clammy. The next stage is progressive. Here an external intervention like giving fluid is required. Or the shock can progress into the irreversible stage. So why is this progressive? At this stage, hypoxia or a condition of decreased oxygen sets in. Now this results in anaerobic glycolysis. The end product of anaerobic glycolysis is lactic acid and that causes lactic acidosis. And that in turn causes arterial dilation. Now all this cause a decrease in cardiac output. It can also cause endothelial damage, which ultimately can cause disseminated intravascular coagulation. Now all these are aiding more and more organ damage and so we can say that this is a progressive stage. Now at irreversible stage, survival is not possible even with interventions. Some of the features of irreversible stages are there will be release of lysosomal enzymes that can injure the cells. Increased nitric oxide release will impair the cardiac contractility. In addition to this, the microbial flora in our intestine start to invade and cause infections. And also the kidneys get damaged by acute tubular necrosis. In morphology, the organs that are affected from the bottom to the top are adrenals, kidneys, gastrointestinal system, liver, lung, heart and brain. I will be discussing only the key features of these organs. Adrenal glands due to their increased activity result in lipid depletion in their cells. 
Focal hemorrhagic necrosis is seen in their inner cortex and in case of septicemias, a condition known as waterhouse Friedrichsen syndrome results in massive hemorrhagic necrosis. Kidneys undergrowth, they will be seen swollen, congested and pale. Coming to the microscopy, explained under tubules and interstitium, in tubules there will be focal necrosis of the epithelium. There shall also be pigmented cast containing hemoglobin and myoglobin. In interstitium, there is edema as well as mononuclear cells. Coming to gastrointestinal system, there will be mucosal erosion, hemorrhage and ischemic necrosis. Now, lungs are usually resistant to shock. However, in severe cases, there will be acute respiratory distress syndrome. On growth, they will be firm and congested and on consection, they show frothy oozing fluid. Edema, necrosis and hyaline membrane formation is seen. Coming to the heart, there will be petechial hemorrhage on epicardium and endocardium. The necrosis seen in the myocardium have prominent contraction bands. Liver is seen enlarged and mortal and microscopy show centrilobular necrosis. Coming to brain, encephalopathy and cortical necrosis is seen. That winds up this video and you must 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 learn about the septic shock. I'll be dealing about it in the next video. Thank you.